building a metalworking lathe with basic workshop tools. A couple of years ago, I built a small homemade lathe from framing struts and a go-kart motor. It has been put through its pace making dozens of parts. However, its lack of rigidity made it extremely chattery and anything harder than brass. It also turned a noticeable taper, had bad runout on the chuck, and there was no tailstock to be found. A couple of times using it as the world's worst milling machine definitely didn't help. It was clearly time for a serious upgrade, so I made a couple of CAD models of possible lathe designs. Once I came up with a satisfactory design, I headed out to the local steel yard to get a proper base for my new lathe. I settled on this 8 inch C channel because it was extremely thick and rigid, but it took over 8 minutes to cut with a standard reciprocating saw. I then used a wire brush power drill adapter to clean off the rust and grease left over from the steel yard. I drilled and tapped a 1 inch steel shaft for the main spindle using a 3D printed hole guide to precisely align the holes. I drilled the chuck mounting plate using another guide. I attempted to reduce the diameter slightly, but this didn't end up working. I next cut out and worked free the motor slot so the drive belt could be properly tensioned. Next, the bolt holes were marked out and drilled, with thick bolts holding the headstock channels securely in place. The linear rails I planned to use happened to be too long, so I decided to cut them to the required size. This is an extremely tedious process, using a carbide blade to get through the hardened steel and a standard blade for the aluminum. I was finally able to use brute force to snap the rails at the cut mark once it was scored deeply enough. I next used a jigsaw to cut out the cover panels that would guard the belt and add rigidity. These were then attached by drilling and then tapping the mounting holes, using basic quarter inch machine screws to hold everything in place. With the basic frame complete, it was cleaned, degreased, and painted in a nice shiny red color. Once it was dry, it was back to even more drilling and thread tapping. It is now time to attach those painstakingly cut linear rails with dozens of quarter inch bolts. I now cut some thick aluminum plate to form the carriage and used some X rail as secondary slides as the real linear rail was unfortunately too tall to clear the chuck. I cut out the tailstock aluminum and drilled a large hole to the center of what would become my tool post. I prepared and printed the control knobs on my CR10 3D printer and now it's time to find a good power system for this. I happened to find a neighbor who was getting rid of an electric lawnmower, so I harvested the motor, battery, and wiring from it. Not only could this make the lathe cordless and somewhat portable, but it could provide just over one horsepower for a couple of hours before needing to be recharged. I installed this power system with a cheap VFD controller and gave it a test run. It ran very smoothly, and I also got to test my emergency stop button as well. I used the newly completed tool holder to flatten out the end of the shaft before attaching the chuck plate. With the main chuck installed, I used the drill bit to find the center and drill a mount for the tailstock chuck. Now that it was more or less finished, it was time to give it a test. From the initial tests, it appeared capable of cutting most common materials, yet it still left a terrible surface finish. This is especially bad with mild steel and copper. It turned out that this was because the chuck plate wasn't bolted on tightly enough and the secondary slide was able to wiggle in multiple directions. I tightened some bolts and replaced the secondary slide plate, so it was time to try the common materials again.
These small changes had a big effect, making acceptable surface finishes on almost all common materials. Stainless and high carbon steels were still difficult, but could still be reasonably worked with the right settings and tooling. Now, instead of just facing and finishing, it was time to make a functional part. With its capabilities proven, how much does it cost to build such a machine, and how does it compare to commercial versions? Price-wise, it costs just under $300 in materials, making it almost half of the cheapest commercial alternatives. However, the motor and battery were salvaged for free, so an off-the-shelf motor would cost you probably at least $80 more. As far as features go, it has more motor power, the same bed and chuck dimensions, and more torque for working larger parts. It does, however, lack threading features and does not have an angled cross slide for cutting precise angles. Do I recommend building a lathe like this? It really depends on your intended purpose, but if you only need pretty basic operations, I think it would pay off to invest in a home-built machine. It is also fully customizable with the ability to add other features such as threading, integrated milling, and chuck indexing for more specific and complicated parts. The massive base means there will be almost no flexing in the frame, so any inaccuracy comes from the linear rails. This lathe is a great addition to my workshop and will allow for many new and exciting projects. I can also make many parts for future jet and rocket engines, and continue making improvements to unlock its full machining potential.